Here's an example of a properly sagged span of wire. When we use the term sag, we're actually referring to how much the wire sags or deviates from an imaginary straight line drawn between the points where the conductor connects to the insulator strings on the structures. The amount of tension on the wire determines the amount of sag. Proper sagging is important for many reasons. Company policies and electrical codes that cover the construction and operation of transmission lines generally require that a specific minimum distance be maintained between the lowest point of a conductor and either ground or other conductors on the structure. Proper sagging makes it possible to maintain this clearance. Maintaining proper clearances is an important safety and operation concern. Too much sag in a wire could allow wind to cause a conductor to sway into other conductors or a structure, resulting in a fault condition. Too little sag could place excessive strain on structures and conductors, causing them to weaken or break. The proper amount of sag or tension that needs to be placed on a conductor is indicated in construction documents and on prints for a variety of weather conditions. Several things must be taken into account when determining the amount of sag. One of the conditions that crews must consider is temperature. Conductors expand and contract when heated or cooled. Expansion or contraction will greatly affect the sag of the conductor. Sagging crews often use a thermometer, like this, to determine the temperature of the conductor for sagging purposes. Depending on the temperature, the crew will then refer to the construction documents or to sag tables to determine the amount of sag necessary for the specific temperature conditions that exist at the time the sagging is done. Wind and other adverse weather conditions can also affect sagging. Ideally, Sagging is done on a day when there's little or no wind. If this isn't the case, then company procedures should be followed for determining if sagging can be done and what adjustments are necessary to compensate for the wind. The final concern that we'll discuss is grounding the conductor. Even in areas of new construction where no energized lines exist, an electrical charge can build up on a conductor due to friction and conductor movement. Where wire is strung to replace existing conductors, energized lines in the vicinity of the installation job can induce a substantial voltage in the conductor. Many companies require that conductors be grounded at all times during installation. This can be accomplished using the rolling ground that was installed during the stringing process, or other temporary grounds may be applied to protect the crew from electrical charges.